Well, I finally made it back to Jamestown, New York, the town where Lucille Ball was born. And this trip has been on my bucket list for years now. Not only was she born here, but she's also laid to rest here at Lakeview Cemetery. And as you can see, right now I'm here on Lucy Lane, which is the street where her childhood home is located. When she lived here as a child back in the 1920s, the street was called 8th Street, but years later, after she became famous, they renamed the street Lucy Lane in her honor. The address of her former home is 59 Lucy Lane. The home was owned by her grandparents, Fred and Flora Bell Hunt, and she lived here with her mother, Dee Dee, her younger brother, Freddie, and her first cousin, Cleo. Unfortunately, her father, Henry Ball, died at the young age of 27 from typhoid fever. Lucy was only three years old at the time, and her mother, Dee Dee, was pregnant with Freddie. So I'm assuming that's why Lucy's mom brought the kids to live with her parents. The home is actually located in the small town of Celeron, which is just a mile or so from Jamestown where she was born. The home here is also just a half a mile from the park where her memorial statue is located. And I'm gonna head over there next. And it's just three miles away from the Lucy and Desi Museum located in downtown Jamestown. And the house is just four miles away from Lakeview Cemetery where she's buried. I'm going to visit all three of these locations today. And for those of you who make it all the way to the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you another Lucy Memorial location that I just happened to spot by accident. It actually turned out to be one of the highlights of my visit here. So keep watching until the end if you're interested to see it. At the opposite end of this short street, you can see the train tracks just one block over from Lucy Lane. I'm assuming that these tracks were probably here when she lived here and that she was able to listen to and watch the trains go by every day. Let me zoom back in a little bit here so you can see it a little bit closer. And on this map here, you can also see that her childhood home is just a couple of blocks away from Chattaqua Harbor. It seems likely that she would have spent lots of time there as well. So let's head back down the street and take another look at the house before I head on to her memorial park and memorial statue, which is just about a half a mile away from here. I wonder if there was once a house here just to the right of Lucy's house, or if it was always a vacant lot like this. It looks as if the house hasn't really changed very much at all since she lived here about a hundred years ago. It's really weird to think that it was that long ago. But she lived here for more than a decade until they had to move in 1927. As you can see, the current owners are very proud of the house and even have a website for the house posted on the front door, which is also the address of the house, 59lucylane.com. Apparently, the colorfully painted polka dot garage is a Lucille Ball collectibles and memorabilia gift shop. I didn't see anything on the website about tours of the house, but that's definitely a tour I'd be interested in taking. Have any of you been here and do you know if they've ever offered tours of the house? Okay, so let's head over now to Lucille Ball's Memorial Park, which is really just walking distance from her childhood home here. Over the years, I've heard that there's been a lot of controversy about her memorial statue that's also here in the park, and that I believe in 2016, it was replaced by a newer statue that looks a lot more like her. So I'm curious to see if both statues are here or if it's just the new one. I've heard that the old statue is referred to as the scary Lucy statue, so I'm very curious to see what it looks like and to see for myself what all the controversy was about. Well, I wasn't sure if this was the new statue or the old statue, and a woman was just walking by and I asked her and she pointed out that the old statue is right over there. So I'm gonna go take a look at that one too. And unfortunately the statue, the sun is behind the statue, so I can't even really get a good picture with Lucy because she's not in the sun this morning and I'm here at 7.30 in the morning. Let's see if I can get a better angle over here. Well, that's, that's not too bad here. All right, just on time, I just arrived to take a picture with Lucy and the noise machines arrived right on cue. This is the old, very scary statue of Lucy over here in the corner. And here is the new, really nice statue. It looks just like her. 
did a really nice job. Nice plaque here. The old one was done, I think, in 2009, and it took all these years for them to finally decide that they needed a much, much better statue that looked something like Lucy. Here's the plaque for the original statue. So which Lucy statue do you like best? I like the fact that this depicts the Vitamita Vegemin episode, but I definitely prefer the newer sculpture. Unfortunately, I'm here in downtown Jamestown very early on a Monday morning, so I'm pretty sure that the Lucy and Desi Museum is not going to be open this early. But I still wanted to stop by and see what it looked like from the outside and walk around this quaint little town for a little while that looks as if time has stood still since Lucy once lived here. I love little towns and main streets like this, don't you? Especially when they're located just down the street from a cemetery. And I definitely have a thing for street art and murals, too. Alright, so... Gosh, which direction do I go? Gates locked at 4.30. Okay, so Lakeview Cemetery. I'm gonna have to pull out my GPS and see where Lucille Ball's gravesite is located. Now, this is the smoothest road I've had so far, right here inside the cemetery. <laughs> Not a pothole yet. Gosh, I'm guessing the city or the state doesn't control these streets inside. That's why they're so nice. I shouldn't be so mean, but gosh, it's just hard to believe that with all the toll roads back here making millions and millions and millions of dollars, that there's millions and millions and millions of potholes. How is that possible? So, all right, let me look and see if I can find her, the GPS to her gravesite. side. Look how pretty the cemetery is. Well, that was really easy to find. And I guess I came in the wrong way. If I made a left through the gates, probably these red Lucy hearts and L's would have brought me right here. But I came the other way and it was still easy to find. And she's right there. I could see her just from, uh, right from the street real easily. And the sun is out. Every video I've seen of her gravesite has been in the snow. So I'm glad to be here in the spring. It's a nice path here to her final resting place. Well, of course, this side is not so easy to, to read. Let's see, with the sun behind. In fact, I can't read it at all. Oh boy. So you see lots of people have been here. It says Ball, Henry Durrell Ball, Desiree Evelyn Hunt Ball, Lucille Desiree Ball Morton, you've come home, Fred Henry Ball, 2007. Huh. Well, this is probably her mom's family, I guess. And someone left a little heart, Rick. Fred Hunt. Florabelle Orchid Hunt. I'm just trying not to walk in the mud. That's why I'm a little bit too close. Harold Hunt. Lola Hunt. Reuben Hunt. Evelyn Hunt. All right, so this was the Hunt family plot, I guess. Yeah, so look at this, some more hunts. John Lee Hunt, Arilla Hunt, Corey Dunn Hunt. Well, that's nice, she's back here with her family. Gosh, more hunts over here. So this is a huge family plot. Ernest Hunt. And sorry if you can't read this because the sun is on the other side, just like it was on her, her statue. So if you wanna be able to read these, you wanna come during the afternoon. There are a lot of hunts in this section. This is the Hunt family plot. And Lucille Ball is right here in the middle. I've been wanting to come back here for so long and I'm happy that I'm finally here. I have visited her previous final resting place at Forest Lawn in the Hollywood Hills. Been there a couple of times, but then she was moved back here 
and I've been wanting to come back and see the town, see her statue, see her museum. Have any of you been here? If so, share your experience, share your visit in the comments section. I'm really impressed with the cemetery. It's so much nicer and so much larger than I, what I was expecting. I was expecting a really tiny little cemetery, and this seems to be pretty large. Not enormous, but, but large. I went to Niagara Falls yesterday, and last night I stayed in a hotel just south of Buffalo. Jamestown is about 95 miles southwest of Niagara Falls, and it took me about an hour and 45 minutes to get here this morning. And since it's so close, it makes me wonder how often Lucy visited Niagara Falls when she lived here. As I promised at the beginning of this video, if you watch to the end, I would show you another Lucy landmark here in Jamestown. So let's drive over there now, and on the way, I want to give a shout out and a very big thank you to those of you who have made very special donations to my channel, either through Patreon or through YouTube Super Thanks. Thank you for your very kind and generous donations to this channel, Tina, Janet McGuffey, and Queen of Greenland. Your support is very appreciated. Who remembers the famous I Love Lucy episode, California, Here We Come? Well, the iconic image from that episode is now the largest I Love Lucy mural in the country. And I just happened to spot it right here in Jamestown. In fact, I was standing in front of the museum and I happened to look down the street and spotted this mural way off in the distance and knew I had to drive over and get a closer look. It's located on 34 Harrison Street. And it was the perfect ending to my very moving and memorable visit to Lucy's hometown. As always, thanks for joining me on this road trip down memory lane. Until our next trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.